Enduring must give in to engaging. What does that mean? In the wilderness, you endured the hardships. In the promised land, you engaged the enemy. In the wilderness, your secret was to endure. In the promised land, you fight. I was meeting a brother today who said, Vlad, you know, I used to go to a church where um, you were more encouraged to, you prayed for healing, you didn't get healed. Well, ask God for grace to endure it. And a lot of you, maybe a lot of us here today, that's all we've been taught. If you're sick, endure. You poor, endure. You have constant fights in the family, endure. And you have scriptures in the Bible where it says, if you endure till the end, you'll be saved. And that's good. But there is a season in your life where God takes the endurance and says, you've endured long enough. Now fight. Now engage. Now fight the enemy. Not just get through, but fight the enemy. Can somebody shout amen? I want you to write down. You don't get what God has promised. You only get what you fight for. God promised Israel all of the land. They only got what they fought for. You don't get what God has promised, my friends. You get what you fight for. You get what you refuse to endure, refuse to settle for by saying, you know what, Lord, you promised it. It's your will and I'm going after it. I'm going to fast for it, God. I'm going to pray for it, God. I'm going to confess your promise, God. I'm going to stand on your word. Not on what my preacher said. Not on what my old church said. Not on what the tradition says. Not what the circumstances say. What your word says. Your word created the earth. It will change my circumstances. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. And you want to get everything God has promised. Can somebody say amen? God has promised healing, God has promised deliverance and God has promised blessing of God into your life and you have to stand for it and fight for it. And those of you who are these deep theologians who say if God has promised He will make it happen, well God wants to save everyone, right? People are going to hell. Right, He doesn't want to save people. Of course He does. It says clearly in His Word He wants none to perish. See God there's a permissible will of God and the perfect will of God. Permissible will of God is whatever happens on earth. It's what we permit. Perfect will of God is what God has promised and He wants you to come in agreement with Him. You come in agreement with His Word and with His Spirit to accomplish that against the forces of the devil. It's not God that's the problem now. It's the fact that there is an enemy that is opposing the blessing and you have to agree with God and come against that enemy and have the victory in your life in Jesus' name. I want you to write down one more thought when it comes to this. God does not have your blessing. Enemy does. For Israel, God didn't sit on their vineyards. God didn't. Angels did not live in their houses. It wasn't the angelic host that was controlling their vineyards. Their wells were not possessed by archangels. All of the blessings God has promised were occupied by the enemies of God. And so God was sending them. So it would be foolish for Israel to come to God and say, God, give me a vineyard. God says, I don't have it. Hittites have it. Philistines have it. Amalekites have it. Midianites have it. And God says, if you want it, I promise. But God, if you promised it, weren't you going to give it to me? A hundred percent. How are you going to give it to me? See, they've been sitting on it, maintaining it for you. So this is what's going to happen. Me and you are going to join together and we're going to go kick them out and you're going to possess what I promised to you. That's exactly how it was. Healing is not just in heaven. Healing, God has it in your body. The healing is already in your body. Health is in your body. But sometimes if there's cancer in the body, See, the problem is not with your body. The problem is with the cancer. When the cancer is removed, your body is fine. When the arthritis is removed, your body is fine. When the spirit of poverty is removed, your finances are fine. When the spirit of fighting and, and pride is removed, your marriage becomes fine. The problem is not with God. God does not have in heaven His blessing, your blessing in His pocket. It's the demons that have His hands in your blessing. And God says, don't just cry to me. Let's go with me against the Midianites, Gibeonites, Mennonites and destroy them and get your blessing in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? And the last thing is that God was furious when they would get more in the wilderness. But in the promised land, He was furious when they settled for less. In the wilderness, when one guy brought more man other than he should, God got angry. When Israel wanted meat and they were not happy with manna, God was furious. In the promised land, we see about 10, 15 chapters where Israel settles. They got just enough to be happy. And God comes and He says, why are you not pursuing more? 
why are you not fighting for more but they said God we're fine God says well you're fine but that's not what I promised I promised you a lot more and God says now I'm furious because I want you not settled for less than what I promised don't settle for what you're comfortable with settle for what I am comfortable with for you can somebody say amen God wants you healed God wants you blessed God wants you prospering why because you're your child and if you're doubting that if you have a child would you want for your child to be sick would you want for your child to be poor would you want for your child to be possessed tormented of course not you're not even perfect God is better than you do you think that God somehow in heaven sits there and says what kind of disease do I send them a tumor or a lump in their body do you think God in heaven says and he says well I, I just want to just really make him poor why so they make make him humble God doesn't have those desires and God disciplines his children don't get me wrong God speaks to us many times in, in in our pain when we don't listen to him in our pleasure but it's God's will to bless you it is God's will to touch you it is God's will to help you it is God's will he paid for it on his own blood on the Calvary to help you in Jesus name